Science Museum of Minnesota is located in downtown St. Paul. We're actually uh, right on a bluff overlooking the Mississippi River. And the Science Museum is a major destination for people who want to both have fun and learn at the same time. So we have uh, about 700,000 visitors a year, but we actually reach far larger audiences across the United States because we produce exhibits for tour and we produce exhibits for other museums around the country. We've, we've got all different types of energy needs and needs in the building. Finance is always a big thing when you run a building and there's never a building that has too much money. So being efficient is the key to our success. One of their critical areas is the collection vault where the humidity control is critical to maintaining and preserving special artifacts they have in there. So uh, the challenge with a large building like the Science Museum or any large commercial, institutional or industrial building is that you typically have simultaneous heating and cooling needs with inside the building all year round. So what we did up until we did our retrofit and what is still common practice is to treat that heat energy as waste and throw it away as quickly and easily as possible. We have two high lift train screw chillers. They are 160 tons each for a combined total of 320 tons. So what we're doing now with the heat recovery equipment is that we're extracting that heat energy from where we do not want it. And we're doing a couple of things. One of the things that we do is we export it to the exterior of the building. So we're taking that heat energy from deep inside the Science Museum and putting it to the exterior walls of the Science Museum. And we're also taking some of that heat energy and putting it into a heat exchanger. So that as we bring in fresh but cold air in the wintertime, that cold air passes through the heat exchanger and picks up the heat energy that previously we were throwing away. And so not only are they reducing their heating load and saving money, they're reducing the emissions and the pollution that would have resulted from generating that energy that they didn't need to because they already own that heat. Our objectives at the museum of lowering our energy costs, lowering our carbon footprint, are helped greatly by the train chillers. We can now utilize solar and wind energy and use the electric chillers to move the energy around within the building instead of throw it away like we used to do. We have reduced the Science Museum's heating bills by over 70% because we're capturing, we're using heat energy that we previously were throwing away. So that has inspired us to look further about how we can further push the envelope on, on what uh, buildings can do in terms of their energy performance. So I think the heat recovery system at the Science Museum is part of their vision to create scientific solutions to great problems that we can all make the world better as a result of. I think the bottom line here is that we can do better than running chillers and boilers at the same time. If we're doing that, there's technology available that can eliminate that redundancy and that inefficiency and not only do the right thing environmentally, whether you're concerned about pollution or greenhouse gases or whatever, and at the same time, have it pay for itself. 25% to 100% payback in a year is pretty powerful. Train has been an extremely good provider to the museum. And with the reliable chillers that we bought, Train has been there from product selection to product installation to product support down the road. Like the museum, we've been around 100 years. Train's been around 100 years. And like us, we expect to be there in the future, reliable and being able to be counted on.